Hello, hello. Hey. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. It's great to see you. Yes. Thank you for being Where did you arrive? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still getting over jet lag, but... Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Bonjour. 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 Hi. Yes, we've been admiring all year. Yes, a few. We have a few, a few, few synthesizers. Toys, huh? Yes. yes. <laughs> Lots of family gear, huh? Yes. When I met Bob a quite long time ago, I had a relationship with uh, the theremin family. And I got also one of the, of the real Russian first theremin that... Um, I don't have here. And then uh, when, uh, when uh, Bob Moog uh, took the, uh, uh, I mean, decided to, to, to build the theremin uh, under the Big Briar mm -hmm. company, as, as yeah. you know much better than me, yeah. right? Uh, I, I must say that it's, it's very close to the original one. I must even say that it's better, <laughs> better than the original one. <laughs> And uh, you don't have a, a lots of um, mythological instruments in electronic music, and apart from Moog mainly, some others as well, but the idea of craftsmanship in music and in musical instruments. And the theremin is the same. This instrument doesn't sound the, uh, in the same way that, that the modern or the current uh, theremins that uh, uh, Moog is uh, manufacturing these days. And so this is one of the element of the Moog uh, 55 that yeah. I really, really love. But this one is also uh, one in, uh, I'm using also on, on stage. And, uh, it's oh, the, so the, you're touring with it? Yes. Oh, excellent. The, Moog, uh, the Moogs are, are always one of the heart, if I can say so, of, the, of uh, my working studio and on stage. This one, this one I, I really like. This one is this one is this one is one we found it here in London, somewhere, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's really cool. It is really cool. Cool instrument. It's uh, one guy did. You know, you have so many crazy people. You know, this is really cool. I really love these these keyboards. It, it's it's a it's a real instrument. You know, the fact that it never sound the same. Could be a, a con, but it, it's also you have pros and cons in this kind of situation. That every 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 night is slightly a slightly different. different. Yeah. Exactly. The Taurus one is my favorite instrument. The the Taurus two, I'm not I'm not the only one, but I won't say n right. uh, no comment. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, but the Taurus three is a is a killer. Is a fantastic uh, instrument. That actually the one of the uh, musician is a. Uh, playing lots of drums and uh -huh. playing the bass. He's doing lots of things and, and then he's playing uh, all that by hand. It's his own way to, uh, to deal with this. My, my favorite uh, synth of all times, of course, is the uh, memory Moog I'm, I'm, using, I'm using on stage and in studio all, all the time. This is my, my favorite, um, I've got two actually. And uh, this is my, my, uh, my favorite polyphonic analog synth with an instrument like this. This one is, uh, is very capricious, right? It's like an, uh, an old lady. Huh? He says sometimes you have to just switch off and because it uh, freaks out. But you know, it's, it's interesting also to share this kind, of, um, uh, this kind of situation with the audience in days where people are, are so obsessed by being poly technologically correct, that everything has to be absolutely perfect and, and everything, you, you must hide cables and you, you must do, a, a, you know, everything has to be clean. I mean, the fact that suddenly you have problems with the instruments rather than hiding it, if you are sharing it with the audience, it changes everything because in, people love that. Well, first, thanks for being here. We appreciate your time. It's a pleasure. It's quite, quite, quite a while. We said we try to catch up, and yes. so it's it's great. And uh, I, uh, I really enjoy the, the the work you're doing with the Moog Foundation. And it's good to see that uh, heritage is is alive and uh, and uh, not in a kind of uh, nostalgic way, but also. Uh, Looking to the future, yeah, and, uh, practical way. And, and also it's it's interesting to see that uh, it's it's interesting what what's going on with the ele electronic uh, electronic uh, music, where people are are considering uh, sometimes um, the first generation of instruments created by Bob and 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 
bunch of other people in the in the 50s and 60s uh, like uh, like being old or vintage when you don't think that a Stradivarius for instance or a trumpet or a saxophone is vintage is timeless and uh, and it's, it's interesting because you need actually time to become timeless uh, and and uh, and and the uh, violin from the 17th century is timeless. It, it was probably vintage in the 50 years later, 50 years later in the beginning of the 18th century. And uh, it's starting to be like this, that uh, young generations now are, are not only pay tribute, but also an, having a knowledge of where it's coming from, where the music we're doing these days, how is it started, and, and, uh, and obviously, uh, uh, Bob's contribution to uh, to what we're doing, what what everybody is doing today, is uh, is huge. And I would probably not be here uh, myself without uh, without him. Having said that, it's uh, very interesting for, on the European point of view, to 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 see that uh, actually electroacoustic music is uh, something coming from Europe first, from, from France, from Germany, from Italy, from Russia, I mean, at the beginning of the 20th century. And Robert Moog, in a sense, is almost the second generation. Lots of people, probably, in, and, and of, of course in America, are thinking that everything started there. But actually, electronic and electronic acoustic music started a long time before, okay. at the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the 20th century, almost 50 years earlier. And uh, what the, 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 the absolute, absolute unique contribution of um, Robert Moog is actually suddenly he got the fantastic idea to, 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 uh, uh, to popularize uh, an instrument uh, and making an electronic instrument as a real instrument that you could practice, you could play, you could, uh, you could also uh, um, uh, share and uh, integrate in lots of different uh, styles of music. And where, when I started, uh, I started even before synthesizers, really, uh, per se. And we were, we were I remember when I was a, a student, a kid, a teenager, uh, at the uh, Groupe de Recherche Musicale, the Music Real Center, with uh, Pierre Schaeffer and Pierre Henry. Right. Uh, we were actually stealing from radio stations, public radio stations, some filters and oscillators, not made for music, but made for, for setting the, 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 it was in the technical room to, 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 to set the, the uh, transmitters and things like that. They were not doing, they were not, of course, these, uh, these instruments were uh, instruments for measurements, not for making music. So we, we, we actually were building what would become later synthesizer by just taking some uh, some different machines like filters and 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 and, uh, and tape recorders and and, uh, and oscillators to make uh, our own sounds and and uh, and the, the, the fantastic contribution of uh, of um, Robert is actually he's uh, suddenly put everything in 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 the same box to and and saying this is the the instrument of the future.